Hello everybody, welcome to Undead Overexplained Game 1 up against Rent a Ghost on uh, the official ladder here. We've both about a thousand TV. I won the toss, I'm going to receive. You should always, always receive the ball. Um, there you go. I would say if you want tips for Blood Bowl, you should always explain. explain. You should always receive the ball, bang people out to start. That's the most important thing. Get the hits in, kill players. There you go. Number one thing always receive. Always. Always. Um, so, yeah. Right, I need to change these. Here's a good thing as well. I'm putting on all skills, but we don't need to see regen, right? So, I'm going to turn off regen in the skills here. And no hands. To make this look a bit nicer. There we go, it already looks fine. Okay, so he's he's really guarding the sidelines. There's really no need for him to do this. He's not really getting much out of that. I'm going to put five on the line. Usually put five on the line. Two here. And two here. That is the normal way to set up. I should do a receiving guide but um I haven't yet but I will do okay so you want to block with block on the LOS you want to diagonally block so you get follow-up hits and you want to protect against a blitz a little bit so this does all of that right you've got your two most reactive players in the backfield ready to go where the ball goes actually I guess there's a there's a good point if it goes really wide maybe have them like this, right? So if it goes right in the corner, then I can come and pick it out a little bit. So maybe back here is good for that. Um, so yeah, so we've got we've got two players back to get the ball. Like if he gets a blitz here, he can if he knocks this guy over or this guy over, there'll still be a screen to stop him getting through. So this is a pretty decent anti-blitz setup. We're going to try and block with block, and then leave this guy with the three D. And also maybe get a 3D for this guy as well. So, um, so, yep, he's only got one wolf. That's nice. So the opponent has frenzy. <laughs> when your opponent has frenzy, what you shouldn't do is set up like a complete idiot and get players served for free. I've managed to not do that this time. Okay, so he gets a... Uh, yeah, right, so I've got to think about where the ball's going to go, right? I can get the ball here, but I've got to think, what if I fail? Um, so with that in mind, and the fact that I'm playing against a frenzy player, I'm going to bring these guys up to cover, to stop him breaking through to pressure me. Also, I'm going to fire up my auto-clicker, so I don't have to click a million times to move everybody. That is a godsend for this game because having to click 20 times to blitz or move or block or stand your players up is absolutely horrendous. Right, so we're going to hit things first. Down the LOS. I'm actually going to put this guy in here to get the 3D now. Straight away. Get the POW. So... Normally, if you power your follow to keep pressure on, the problem is that I'll be giving a hit here and it might not be good. Um, I think it is going to be good. So I'm going to follow. It does stop this hit. <laughs> God. So that's 3D. Uh, sorry, that's 2D. We get the block, which makes this one a 3D. 
Now I could blitz with him because I don't. I, I don't think. Well, I'm not going to blitz him, right? Because I wouldn't get the assist because he's there. So this guy's going to drop back here, and this mummy's going to blitz because he might as well. I'm going to tuck in there to make it safer against all the wolf stuff. I'm not sure if I'd reroll the pickup. I've got to think about the time here, and I'm in 30 seconds of extra time already, so this is tough. I'll, maybe I'll try not to over explain too much. Uh, but, you know, did the safe moves first. Covered for the pickup. Like, lots of people, you know, think you should cover the pickup by standing man next to the ball, right? Standing man next to the ball wouldn't have done anything at all there. What we have to do is stop these players breaking through with, uh, you know, the wolf into the backfield and the ghoul on the other side and stuff. So you, you've got to stop. It's better to avoid the pressure completely, right, than like, oh, I've got a guy next to it if I fail. And that's Sometimes you need a guy next to it when it fails, but in this situation, you just need to not be able to get pressured instantly. He is lapping around here, but that's okay because it's uh, it's not too much of a concern. Yep. <laughs> that would be incredible, Mordred. Yeah, turn off no hands and now they can pick up the ball. Yeah, Raids have got no hands, but you don't need to see that, do you? Um, yes, I read there was a patch today. They um, they have they have fixed some things on PC. Very nice. Yeah, so like th this assist, um, the reason I assisted from here instead of here was, if I push, he's still he's just you know okay he, he could block this guy, but he's still leaving himself on the mummy right, and then it, it makes it hard to stop him getting. So I generate a mummy hit by that follow and stuff. Um, which is pretty good. This guy's gonna blitz. Yeah, that blocking. Yeah. Well, that, that, so the reason for this guy blocking is the push direction gets to take him out of the play a little bit there. I really want to blitz this ghoul here because um, I've got block and he doesn't. Now, what I've done wrong here, luckily I don't want in 12, 9, 6. But what I've done wrong there is I didn't do safe moves first, did I? So, I want this guy up here. I want this guy in here. Actually, to be fair, I couldn't put the ball exactly where I wanted first. So, I'll forgive myself. Very important to forgive yourself. Die or style. Okay, so, you know, all the safe moves now. No dice rolls required. And then get these three dice here. Get the poem and follow up. Keep mighty blow and stuff on. Yeah. Removal, good two removals already. Okay, regens, but not a problem. Um, there's no chains for hits a ball. I could foul this guy, right? Plus four foul. It's a ghoul. I'm definitely fouling. I forgot I only had 11 players. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> I literally forgot I had 11 players. I'm so used to having more than 11 players with Undead that I forgot I only had 11 players. However, <laughs> and I was running out of time so I panicked. <laughs> so there you go, there's an insight into the messed up brain of Jim. But, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a skill to school, but it's still a ghoul, right? He's only got the ghoul and the uh, wolf. Wait, he hasn't got... Yeah, yeah, the wraith. The wraiths have got no hands, right? So he's only got two players. He, has, he hasn't got any more. Let me put the skill rings on. The skill rings, you can see. So yeah, he's literally only got two players that can move the ball. So a plus four assist foul on him that didn't cost me anything positionally was pretty good. 
Um, but of course, I was pretty unlucky. Um, I don't like these rings; they, it's, they're way too cluttered, right? But I guess I should put them on in case, like you know, you don't, you can't tell the models apart and stuff. But um, yeah, the flesh golems, strong, stand firm, very annoying. Wraiths, block, sidestep, foul appearance, super annoying. Um, but the only two players that can score on his team, essentially, is the ghoul and the and the wolf. So I don't mind. I don't mind doing that. Uh, doing that foul. But in retrospect, of course, it looks a bit rubbish now. Okay. Well, this is annoying because I would like to have uh, blitzed the wolf. Yeah, rings are, I, yeah, I need a minute to take them on. What I want to do is I want to block the wolf on two dice, so if I don't power it, I can hit it with the, uh, with the mummy, but I'm, I should hit it with block, so I'll hit it with block. I'll do the right thing. Oh, there's a lot to be said for blitzing this flesh golem. It's turn three. I've got plenty of time. Okay, so this guy should stand up first. And then if I power him, things change depending on whether I power him or not. I do power him, lovely. So I could actually hit this guy with a ball carrier, right? Or I can hit him with a mummy for... Yeah, okay, the mummy's hitting him. For the third dice. Oh, he could just not sidestep. I can still move the ball carrier, though, if I have to. He sidesteps to there. Mm, yep, I'm going to tuck in. Oh, that means I lose the assist. I was not thinking. I was not thinking then. Flip me. Oh, this is a disaster. I am stupid. So do I dodge here so I can two dice block? Or do I just one dice block? The one dice is a three plus. The dodge actually doesn't do me very good positionally, so I think I'll just one D and hope that I don't skull. Do not skull. Well done, Jim. But yeah, I guess I shouldn't have followed. Like, it's better to have followed. Like, it's stronger to follow. But the problem was giving... Like, stopping the assist that I was getting. So that wasn't great, was it? Yeah, exactly, Pablos. Yeah, the idea is good. And sometimes they... they it's good to flash them up, right? It, it, honestly, it's good that you can just flash them up. So if you're not certain, you know, you can, you, during your opponent's turn, right, you, you can leave them on. If you, like, like I'll be honest, right, um, I tend to like, you know, <laughs> if I'm not streaming and I was playing this game, I would absolutely tab out when it's not my turn and stuff. And I try not to look at the screen because the screen's so bright and contrasty and horribly, horrible. I tend not to look at the screen when it's not my turn, which as a beginner, you should look at your opponent's turn um, because, you know, you can see how it's developing and stuff. And, uh, you know, it helps you to see how the board is developing rather than coming back to a snapshot of it. I think it does help, um, you know, keeps you more invested in the game and stuff. But um, what I tend to do is stop looking at the board <laughs> when I'm streaming because, you know, it takes more effort and I'd rather just not. So what you could do is if you if you're not look if you are tabbing out you could just put both sides on then when you come back it might just give you a little bit of a help right to see all right well there's his that's where his ghoul is now but then you know just flash it up every now and then 
that's probably the best thing to do. So unfortunately, he's got he's got his uh, he's got his flesh golem and his wraith slammed into the front of the drive, and I've got my mummies behind the ball, which isn't ideal. It's not ideal, but it was very tempting to blitz that fleshy on the back last turn. So now the problem here is this wraith more so than the fleshy. So I am going to hit this wraith on three dice. Uh, but first of all, safe moves first. Let's stand this guy up first. Can we move the ball? No, it's tagged by him, so we have to hit him. Knock him down. And a follow. Keep the mummy on the fleshy. Now, this mummy is going to blitz this guy. It is a two dice, which really does suck. But I'll just roll a full pound, no problem. No reason not to follow. And... Yep, I'm gonna go... Where am I gonna go? I don't have many free players, do I? This is a, it's hard to actually think. <laughs> it's hard to talk about what I'm doing while thinking about what I'm doing, to be honest. I think I just want to get him forward. And then try and knock this guy off with block. Okay, good. Problem is that this Wraith here, so I can't two dice this guy. So I've got these two, three players free. And now obviously I could cage here, but then one can get surfed by the wolf, so we really don't want to get a player surfed by the wolf. Which means, how do we stand somewhere and defend the ball? And the answer to that is, I wish I wasn't talking constantly and had more of an idea. Yep, this is... Uh Not good. Maybe I need to come back. I'm just going to come all the way back here and do an eye cage. I'm not going to block there because I want him to use his players to punch him. If I if I skull here, then he can easily two dice my mummy with claw, so I do not want that to happen. So even though it's it's probably pl plus EV to make this block, um, the fact of like how bad the skull is puts put me off it. I really do have to play quicker. This this is uh, this is tough. It's actually really hard to like say things and play at the same time. But yeah, so an eye cage is something you can do, right? It stops people getting two dice that you like. You can only ever get one dice here. Um, they've got to bring somebody in to cancel the assist, then they can only one dice here. I've got dodge. It's not, it's not too hard. It's not too easy for him to knock him down. This guy over this side here makes it a bit harder for him to uh, break this open and get two players in to hit. So it's not terrible here. But um, it's also not very good. Hello, Martin Crew. <laughs> it is interesting now both teams are complete in the middle. Yeah, like it's hard because obviously versus wolves, I don't want to get surfed, right? So if I if I push down the side there, I could have pushed down the side here last turn. Could have got the the zombie to here, uh, white or a ghoul there, white or a ghoul there, and Paul Cage. I'd do that against anybody else if they didn't have a, if they didn't have a wolf. But unfortunately, they do have a wolf. Yes, I need to leave on thick skull. Yes, Maud Ready. Very important to know that these guys, you shouldn't be fouling them. 
I mean, I've literally just used it to turn off regen and no hands. Um, I've just used it this this game to turn off regen and no hands. So, I guess, had I had longer to think, I would have turned off thick skull. <laughs> Okay, so he's powered everybody here and stunned two of them. It's pretty unlucky, uh, you know, to get everybody knocked over and two of them stunned. Pretty unlucky indeed. It's going to make next turn very difficult, these stuns, and the turn after. The so turns five and six are going to be very difficult. The good thing is he's committed his wolf over here, so now taking this side is a lot safer because he can't actually surf that same turn. Blitz the wolf and just run away a little bit here. This is not good at all. Unfortunately, that, uh, that covers it. Yeah, these two stuns, and also the send-off. In retrospect, I shouldn't have done it. Um, I probably shouldn't have done it anyway, to be honest, with only having 11 players. But it seemed so good, didn't it, to the chance of removing the girl. No regen as well, so I any injury stuck. Oh, we should definitely have followed there. Oh, I, no, I, okay, so I don't think this is very good from him. Why not? Because he's just letting me punch him, that's why. Basing the ball, you know, lots of people will say base the ball. The problem is if you base the ball, you just let somebody punch you. <laughs> um, instantly. Alright, so now I'm definitely just going to run around here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, G5, G5. Uh, it's not great, is it? <laughs> it's not great. I probably got to do another one so that he, I don't get based by this sidestepping guy as well. Good. Oh no, foul appearance! I will basically do nothing. So yeah, you know, I, I want to punch this guy, right? Because he's, he's there. Nothing too clever about that. I could double geofight to punch this guy, or I could, uh, could GFI back. GFI forward? GFI or cross, I think. Okay. I'm gonna have to make this block. And I might as well block with this guy, because uphill with block isn't too terrible. And of course, roll a skull. Well, that's disappointing. I mean, I was more likely to get knocked over than him, right? I was 30% and he I was 25% to knock him over. But if I don't do it, he just punches me and knocks me over with like 55%. So... It's so good if I knock him over. Um, otherwise, I'm just getting punched twice. So I thought that was worth it. There you go. That was the reasoning behind that. Maybe I shouldn't have. And just let him use act actions to punch me. But 
I don't know. That felt okay. Also, I'm losing, running out of time and having to make snap decisions, which is not good. The, the, the talking is really, really difficult. I'm unprepared for how unbelievably difficult it is to talk continuously um, because it means I'm not really thinking about what I'm doing. I'm trying to explain what I'm doing, but it means that I'm not being able to think about what I'm doing, <laughs> which is uh, pretty difficult. I'll take off thick skull. Okay, so this is a great turn for me, really. He's um, he's got into elf screens, which aren't good, and uh, he's blitzed a zombie with a wolf, which isn't good. Eh, uh, that's, that's probably even harder mode ready, because then I've forgotten what I've done. Like, I just play on autopilot, right, 99% of the time. Though the idea with this was to do a, uh, a look at it afterwards. So, okay, this is a, ter so this is a terrible one night block in terms of how risky it is for him, right? He has to re that is unbelievable. That is outrageous that he did not re-roll that. That is completely outrageous. Flip me, guys. Right. Well. This is so good that I think what I have to do is... Because of the turn, I, th I think I just have to get hit by Claw here. And then get forward. So I can get pretty far forward here. Dimmy was mocking me, but we get the classic X cage. We've got mummies in. He can hit the mummies, but uh, well, we'll hit one of them. This guy could have stood up ages ago, I guess. Yeah. Um. One dice this guy? Probably not. It probably is worth keeping them both occupied now. It's way past turn four. Yes, like put, setting up a screen here where it wasn't where I wanted to go was not a great screen, was it? So there you go. Like This is the thing, you know, people talk about the elf screen and stuff. Um, there's lots of, lots of guides and stuff talk about an elf screen. And I think a lot of new players will do it. Oh, I'll, I'll screen here, but you know, this wasn't doing anything. This just took five players out of the front of me and just let me move up into like a very solid state on turn six. After being, after having a nightmare <laughs> the first five turns, that, that screen forming destroyed his defense somewhat. What should he have done? Basically stayed where he was, right? He was like, he was he was stopping me moving pretty well. He was like, he was getting up in my face. Um, what you should tend to try to do is keep people in front of the ball, right? In between the ball and the end zone. And he had got a, a fleshy behind the ball, which is very bad, right? You've got a stand firm guy that I can't move, but he's behind the ball. And then this, uh, this Wraith was also like, you know, level with the ball at least but it get the skull got him behind so yeah just keep in front but like i don't know relevant right like have his tackle zones be doing something he made his tackle zones not do anything he made his strength not do anything his tackle zones not do anything right like a mummy occupying open space is the same as a halfling right he's got the same tackle zones as a, as a halfling but 
if you base him, then all of a sudden his strength 5 is very relevant. So, like, if you're just going to screen, you're not using your strength. Even if you base, then, you you know, you're using the strength, but then it might you might be better off using your tackle zone. But, so, but he didn't use his tackle zones or his strength. He just ran away and shielded a part of the pitch that I wasn't interested in. So now, of course, this is really tempting me to just dodge from this guy so I can blitz this guy. Um, it does mean that I basically lose one in nine times. I don't lose one in nine times, but I don't score one in nine times. Oh, no, I can just block. Irata, Irata, there's a guy here. I can just block him. Okay, that means I've got to do the blitz first. I'll tell you what I want to do. Blitz with a. I want to blitz with block. That's what I want to do. Blitzing with block is the best thing you can do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what I want to do is get somebody out in front as well, which is going to be this guy. So now I can block this guy because the uh, the white, oh my god. <sighs> Gotta reroll the foul appearance, very disappointing. Okay, he's disconnected. Well. Don't know if that means he's going to concede or if he's just actually disconnected. Blocking guarantees removals. Well, it, it ups your chance of knocking somebody over from 55% to 75%, right? Which is very good. Very, very good. And it makes your chance of, reduces your chance of failure or needing a reroll from 1 in 9 to 1 in 36, which is incredible. And lowers your overall turnover rate, even if you, if you have to expend a reroll from 1 in 81 to 1 in 12.96. So it's a uh, block makes a big old difference. So now also Mighty Blow makes a big difference, right? Mighty Blow is uh, is pretty much doubling your chance of making a casualty. So you always want to blitz with Mighty Blow and you always want to blitz with block. And also, you know, you want to blitz for position if you can, right? Lots of turns on, on defense. It's not really going to make much difference who you blitz in terms, like, positionally. So you want to blitz, like, either their most vulnerable or their best player. For example, you know, if you can have a... If you have, a, like, a tackle mighty blow player and you're against Wood Elves, you want to be blitzing the war dancer. If they, you know, if, if one option, you know, is a... It's a 72 out of 100 blitz, and the other option is a 77 out of 100 blitz positionally, then you blitz the war dancer. There's some people who, even if, you know, it was a 4 out of 10 positionally to blitz the dancer, and a 10 out of 10 position to blitz somebody else, some people will still go for the war dancer. And sometimes they'll be right. Maybe a lot of time they'll be right, because war dancers are very, 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 very good. So that, that's the two things with the blitz. You've, you've got to consider attrition and position. And block is better for both compared to no block. And obviously Mighty Blow is better for attrition than nothing. But it's also better than block, right, for just pure attrition. Especially if the guy you're blitzing has block. Um, but then, you know, here you've got to think about position. If I wanted to hit that player with, uh, with a mummy, I'd have had a geified, right? So it did cost me a square of movement, so I could have blitzed with a with a zombie and then powered and then moved the zombie there and then this white could have then got a bit f further forward but there would have been a, a more risky block and actually I wouldn't have knocked him down right because I got bought down in a push so it does it does make a big difference that was a good bit of rambling to fill in the five minutes wasn't it no, not really rambling right it's relevant it's relevant it, you know this is hopefully you know new players can watch this and uh, so I think it's you know 
maybe this won't be so good for the uh, veterans of the stream, you know, to have... Like, this is the problem, right, with the stream, because... Lots of people say, like, you know, we don't explain everything, but then, of course, lots of people are regulars who've been here for several years and, you know, probably don't want to hear war dancers are quite good players every game. <laughs> or the odds of a blockless block every game, you know? Oh, he's back. He is back. Do you know what? I should do my own tier list of coaches. I should do my own coaching tier list like the uh, like the Bonehead podcast did. Yep. So what I could have done there is, yeah, I could have just dodged, right? Which is a one in nine chance of failure. But it's... Uh, the problem... Oh my god. First of all, I can Kaz this guy if I just punch him. <laughs> okay, regen. Never lucky. Um, first of all, I can just Kaz him. Second of all... Okay, if I fail this 1 in 36, it's terrible, but I still have... So what I could do is I could move this mummy to here, but then he could get cleared by the uh, zombie. So I really don't want to move him there. I want to move him to here, which is double GFI. And I also want to move him out there, which is double GFI. But if I use my last reroll, then I'll reconsider the player. Okay. So now he just goes in there. And now this guy is the one who's going to try and roll all of the dice to get in the way of the wolf. Brilliant. So that was a lot safer, right? Just uh, just get something out of the mummy. But had I not used the reroll there, I would have got the mummy in here so that then, you know, he can't do that at all. Um, it sucks to have to use the last reroll. I really, really hate having no rerolls. I think I might have lost time bank. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You don't more dread unless there's been a new bug introduced with the latest patch, which it could have been. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so might have lost a bit because of that. You, we just don't know. Anything's possible. When cyanide patches Blood Bowl three, oh, he's failed. There is no, nothing stopping us here. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to make any dice rolls. Just straight in. If I had a re-roll, it would have obviously been good to hit the uh, ghoul. But um, without any re-rolls, no risks taken. I'm so mad that I thought I had 12 plays for some reason. I'm just so used to having reserves and fouling with undead. So this is one of the three formations I would make if I was... Uh, in charge at cyanide just you know some guys back and three on the LOS um, you know just nothing's gonna happen right he's, he's gonna punch them you just want your rubbish players hit and your good players back to you know just to, to stop the one turn I don't think there'll be a time for a, I don't think there'll be an attempt for a one turn here um, there could be a timeout but it's not worth playing for it better to just protect your players I could have gone further, one further back. I should have been one further back. I just wasn't paying attention. Never mind. No more touchdown zigzagging, Magikarp. Um, apparently some people really do believe that's toxic. Which I think is crazy, personally. But people do think that. So, you know, I'm not going to be toxic on purpose. <laughs> so there you go. I think like the whole idea of calling somebody toxic is seems to be ludicrous in terms of how it's used. 
to me, toxic toxicity would require more than I don't agree with this person, but who knows? Who knows? Still, I still don't want to be called it. So, there you go. <laughs> yes, yes, toxic showboating. Core the you know the both the best and the loveliest blood bowl player in the world. Um, he did that, and somebody called him a toxic showboater, which I found hilarious. But they meant it, right? Like they actually meant it. So there you go. Oh no. He's made two regen rolls. Can we make one? No, of course not. So one foul sent off, one Kaz taken, failed regen. So that's pretty unlucky, right? You know, one nil up, but starting the second half with nine players is is pretty bad, right? This is very likely to be a draw now. Um, unfortunately, I mean, it, is, it is just bad luck. Nothing you can do about it. You can try and play better, but uh, okay. So because we've got like so few players here. Going to do an offset LOS. Protect the two ghouls so they can't get hit. Expose the whites because I care less about losing them than I, than I do the mummies. Um, don't, you know, give him the sideline, nothing I can do about that. If he wants to go down the sideline, he can go down the sideline. He'll score early and uh, then I've got a chance to win. Winning three games, I understand honestly we're winning three games for the weekly challenge because there's people who are 30% win rate, right? 30% win rate is quite ordinary for a casual player, isn't it? And then that means 20 games in a week if you get two of those in your, uh, in your weekly thing. It's quite a lot. That's quite a lot of uh, games to play, so... I think I I don't think it's great having three wins as a, as a thing to be honest. I think like somebody said in the in the suggestions, play th play like win three or play five, which seems which seems better, right? Because win three is often going to mean play seven or more, right? Because the fact that with a fifty percent win rate. Yeah, I guess it shouldn't be, it shouldn't, you, you can argue that it shouldn't be automatic. You can definitely argue that it shouldn't be automatic, the weekly things, yeah. Like, but generally I think they're meant to, like, reward playing, aren't they? Rather than being a, uh, like, you know, if you play X amount, you'll unlock them, right? But three wins. Also, like, you know, even people with 70% win rates don't win seven, lose three, do they? They'll like, you know, win five, draw four, lose one and stuff over ten games. So maybe even for like the best players it's like six games for three wins. Yeah. Yeah, but the point is exactly the point is to encourage to pe people to play, to keep the game alive, to keep matchmaking going, stuff like that. So as far as that goes, maybe uh Maybe it should be easy. Uh, okay, so I could blitz the fleshy here with mighty blow, or I could blitz it with block. There's pros and cons for each, to be fair. 
Also, I could blitz this guy to get him up. But if I blitz him, uh, I could blitz him with a mummy, right? And then get him up. That might be the best play, actually. As much as I'd love to knock over this fleshy, I don't have to stand this guy up. And maybe blitzing him to get him up is the best idea. So we'll move him to protect the mummy. And then blitz. Obviously blockless blitz does suck somewhat. As it happens, it doesn't matter. I should have probably just stood him up first anyway. But now I can see So this protects the mummy, right? Um, I could even, I guess, move the other mummy next to him, but I don't think I need to. I think this is fine. One player's based, it's a mummy that can't get hit. Um, leave this guy down. Yeah. Of course, he can get hit if he blitzes this uh, zombie, so there was an argument for moving the zombie to here and then switching in the other mummy but then if I've got the two mummies together like that he can just go down one side and leave me you know leave my mummies grossly out of position so I thought keep one on each side you know a bit more field coverage with the two mummies He's blitzing with block. That's the knockdown. Well, it looks like he's going to X cage here. to be able to blitz the wolf but I can't double G if I blitz can I realistically or can I Got four rerolls. Double GFI blitz and kill his wolf is pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> it really might be the best play. This guy's going to stand up first. I could blitz him and then stand there on the ball, which is okay if I if I power him, but only if I power him, push is no good. Whereas if I do the double GFI, I'll be basing the ball whatever happens. Okay, let's go. Four rerolls I must have one off one off kickoff and wasn't paying attention. Kill him please. Never lucky. Right, but get to put both ghouls in there. And get to put these guys in here. And block him. Get on his fleshy. I can 1D this, or I can dodge, or I can stay where I am. If I stay where I am, he might take him to block him, which is okay, because then he can't hit this. But if he's clever, he'll go there, block him, and then move and hit this guy as well. So I don't really want to just stand there. I think I dodge and try and go in here. Good. So pretty good response, really, there, right? Six players in contact with his three and then the mummy here as well and also mummy on that guy so a good amount of contact could have killed his wolf
Got Mighty Blow on his wolf, which was pretty nice. And he's kind of split off all of his good fast players from his slow rubbish players, hasn't he? Four zombies left back here. And both of his mobile players are together. Both of his strength three like good players are here. One fleshy. One fleshy's back there. So he's got he, this is this is amazing really. He's been outnumbered six to seven here. With me only having nine players, he's managed to get the five over five on two, basically. But looks like he's going to have to dodge with the ball, yeah. That was an 11% right there to uh, win the game, basically. That would have been a very dominant position had he won in mind. So shoot down that push, push anyway, which is alright, isn't it? Dodge blitzes. Into dub skulls. Into a one dice as well. I mean, he has to re-roll this. He doesn't re-roll. Wow. This is a few times where I've thought he has to re-roll and he just hasn't bothered. Um, super interesting. Right, I think I want to three dice this guy. Because that's given me a three dice on this guy for maximum chance of knockdown, and then it's given me two dice with block for the fleshy, right? Which is. I really want to get down the fleshy. And it's better to mighty blow armor eight than armor nine, basically. More chance of. And there we go, the block hit on him gets him. And breaks his AV. Lovely jubbly. Okay, so this is a blockless block here. I think. Do this safe moves first, and then do the blockless block. Uh, yeah. Okay, do not get to do the blockless block. So in this case, we do a block full block. Get him. Have to follow him to stop the wolf getting a simple two dice. Now this guy can blitz up here. Nice. And come over just a bit, right, to help defend that side. And then he can kind of seal the edge by making this block. Probably best not to follow here, uh, rather than leaving two players in contact with me. Um, I'll just stay where I am. They're only movement four, right? Like, if this was a ghoul, maybe I follow to keep him in contact, but uh, he's not. This is normal ladder keat. Um, you can tell by the zero learn skills. <laughs> I mean, this is all of the skills, but yeah. What is it? H, is it? Yeah, look, zero learn skills. I put on all skills. I guess I should have all skills on, right, for this series. Oh, he gets lucky and gets me. A full pow. Of course, block would have worked as well, so he was 55%. It wasn't ludicrous to get the knockdown. So he goes back to where he was, but he's, you know, in kind of the same situation, except now I've got my play my players ready to activate, so he's not really... 
you know, found an advantage here. I could consider blitzing my mummy just to get him involved in the play. Seems a pretty good idea. <laughs> so, one safe move, which is here, and then this block. Block full block. Do I follow there? I really don't want to get my good players hit by a wolf, so I think I am going to follow. And then stand this guy up as well. Now that I know what's happened with this little section. Right, and here we go, blitz to free up the mummy. The good thing about this blitz is, especially if I power him, which I don't, I can move this guy in and he could have traded like two for one trade, right, with a rubbish Skellington. Um, well, he's not a Skellington, he's a zombie. He can go in there, now he can block here with a ghoul assist to free up the ghoul. One in nine, got four rerolls, definitely use that. Another person on the mummy there. The school is free. I guess just move him down so he can react to whatever happens. Doing quite well here, down two players, I'd say. Making a very good fight of this on nine players for the whole half. Better than just running my players forwards to get surfed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'll ever understand what happened in that game in Super League, but there you go. Necro are definitely not OP to me. They're very, very expensive, the players. The players are super expensive. Which uh, makes them... You know, they need, like, specific packages in NAF to be good. And it's hard for them to get the TV efficiency in ladder due to just how expensive the players are. Like, a Flesh Golem is a pretty bad rookie player, isn't he, when you think about it? He's 110 TV. And, like, he's just a, he's just a black orc, basically. Which is uh, worse than a big one, basically. And yes, there's funky things with a stand firm that you can do with, like, the wolf hitting him. And there's things you can do, you know. But for the most part, you could have no skills a lot of the time. Okay, doesn't kill, and now is stuck on the white. Where's his ball going? He's got to go somewhere. it me. Isn't that interesting? Super interesting.
glorious. Wow. No, I won't give in. Until I'm victorious. And I will defend. I will defend. It's been a while, Jimmy. Here's to over six years of being fantastic, Jim MG. Absolutely glorious. Thank you very much, Audrey Dolly. Unbelievable. Thank you so much. What can I say? Um, it's a lot of beaver pregnancies. <laughs> 19 beaver pregnancies. Unbelievable. Thank you so much. Right, there's a lot to do here, right? I've got a two dice this guy and pow him. I've got a two dice this guy and pow him. And then I've got to bring in two players here, which means dodging this uh, guy out. And so actually, I only need to pow the first one. Let's start with powing this guy. Also, if I pow this guy and pow this guy, then this guy can move one square. But he only moves one square. So maybe... Oh, God, no, because if I dodge him out, then I need to cancel this assist, don't I? So, yep, I can't stand this guy up yet. Can't stand this guy up yet because he's doing the surf. So we'll basically just see if this is a pow, first of all. It's not a pow. Well, there's still a chance, right? Now, this guy does stand up. And we punch him. Kazim. Double GFI here. Yes, and I do that before moving the ghoul, so that uh, if I fail, it's not the end of the world. Now the ghoul comes in, and now we do a one dice block. <laughs> Never lucky. Like, this is acceptable, of course, but if I'd pushed, I could have moved there and surfed the ball. Um, should I have re-rolled? I mean, maybe, right? The problem is, though, what if I reel on a skull? Like, he just rolled a skull. So that is disappointing. I think I have to try and dodge out the ghoul. Down to one reroll now. So he can he can switch right. He's got three turns left. He can try to switch through the center here. He can also like punch there and then surf this and stuff. Or he can just try and clear out to get through here. Yeah, thanks, Dim. He used two rerolls, achieved nothing. Yeah, pretty good. I mean, it was a nice idea, right, to chain and then get the serve. Um, he is okay. Maybe here. It's not. It wasn't a bad turn, honestly. As much as it didn't go right. As much as it didn't go. It, it, as much as the dice were bad, I think it was. Uh, Decision-making was okay, and, you know, there was, there was a strong, there was a strong argument for standing here next to this uh, wolf here. Maybe I should have done. But again, I want people between the ball and my end zone. Actually removed somebody was unbelievable. But yeah, the dice were unkind there, weren't they? The two dice block to free the the uh, ghoul didn't work. The one dice three plus failed, and then <laughs> the one dice um, two plus failed. So <laughs> there were some very bad dice there. Thanks, Dimmy. Never forget. The good thing is, Dimmy, you'll never ever ever let me forget that. <laughs> Which is good, because I wasn't really there when it happened. Oh, 
Okay, so it goes for the 1D. This is what I thought. I thought he might try and go through this way, right? So, uh, so this ghoul is actually doing a pretty good job if he tries to switch there. I don't think I played as bad in those games versus space as I did in the Super League the other day. <laughs> so yeah, he does blitz that ghoul. He doesn't skull when he one dice blitzes. I happen to notice that. Okay, so lots of things can happen here. And it's not doing anything. Alright, so the first thing we do is a blockless block here to try and get this skeleton on the ball. Uh, zombie even. Instantly fail. <laughs> Wonderful! <laughs> Now this two dies. That gets us out. Good. And then a blockless one here so I can blitz with block. Yeah, so we we're trying to free the we we're trying to free the zombie to, to assist the blitz, yeah. But in, you know this is this is fine having the having the ghoul there, but obviously the ghoul could have got the ball. Um, also, if I'd moved the zombie there first, I could have just had to like a free roll at getting the pow uh, before having the blitz with this guy. Last free roll about to be used on the GFI. No, get the full pals. Good. I think I have to follow. Put him away from his players for a chance of a zero tackle zone pickup. And we'll still try and pick it up here. More reroll. Just see if it works. It does. Now, the big question is, do we dodge and GFI? Probably not, right? All he has to do is, is push this guy. And then, well, if he powers this, no, oh, yeah, no, it's better, it's better to be in contact. Well, oh, is it? Put, put, put a player there, block him, and then he can block him, and then he can bit. You can do, you can do all of that if I'm one square away as well, right? Like it is giving an extra block here. But it's, it's taking a lot of players to do this, so I'm just going to stay here. And if it works, it works for him. The fact that he's having to use the clear, you know, the the fact that he's not getting this is the moment means he has to block this guy and stuff with somebody. So he's he's got to move players in to do anything. This is pretty good. I don't want to risk the failing the GFI or failing the dodge. Let's just be standing with the ball with dodge. Actually, this zombie's in a pretty great spot, funnily enough, isn't it? But then, to be fair, so if, if I'd got the knockdown, this this zombie would have come down, and I would have blocked with the ghoul, which would have powered in there, which would have been very good. Yeah. 
So if I'd done the dodge, he would have just made that block without having to move this guy. And then this guy would have moved in for the assist and this guy would have blitzed. So everything would have been just the same, realistically. Gets the full power. Disappointing. And the AV break. Lovely. I didn't get the AV break, just saying. I guess it does mean that he's got that zombie thing now. Doesn't fail anything. Nice. And yeah, now this guy gets to come here, doesn't he? So maybe I should have made that dodge, but you just don't know, do you? Okay, well he's gone the wrong way, really, right? He'd have been better to make this worse, because he hasn't got dodge. So he's uh, he's blocked the path of the wrong player. It would have definitely been better to have been one square up to make the non-dodge guy have to do a 4-3. Whereas now it's the dodge player doing a 4-3, and the non-dodge just has to do a 3+. Oh my god, he makes the dodge. Makes no difference at all. Okay. He should have GFI'd. Yeah. Where did it go? 1, 2, 3, 4. He should have double GFI'd to get there to actually do something. It's just literally not making any difference whatsoever. Uh, all these stand-ups these stand don't make any difference or anything, right? Like, he's just going to score next turn. Get the get the knockdown with block. Don't get the catch. <sighs> right, now there's an argument for staying where I am. Double GFI foul. So, he actually has this wolf that can score as well. Right, that's as much as I can do there. Dodge double GFI foul. Made the dodge! Ah, oh, never lucky. Actually, maybe I should have just stood next to the ball, right? But... <laughs> <laughs> the double GFI was really... Oh, oh, he's only in range to, to... He's so far away. Okay, yeah, this is really hard for him, right? This is really hard for him. He needs, like, zombie ball handling and stuff. Or fleshy ball handling. So should have got the 1-0 win here. And he's like a zombie pick up and pass. Zombies can't pass! He needs, he needs a flesh golem pass. F flesh golems can't pass. He needs a wolf pass. The wolf is out of range. I should have pushed the wolf over there. He needs a zombie pass to the ghoul. Uh, he, sorry, a ghoul pass to the wolf. That's what he needs. Oh no, he can just hand off to the zombie. Oh my god, I'm an idiot. He can just hand off to the zombie, of course. The zombies can still just get the ball. Oh god, I just thought for some reason zombie because zombies couldn't pass, they couldn't catch. I don't know what went through my head then. He just had to pick it up and hand off to the zombie. Well shit. Well shit. I don't know why I thought he couldn't hand it off to us. I got so excited thinking he had to long vomit to a wolf. But yes, he could score on a zombie, of course. I've scored many, many touchdowns on flesh golems. I don't know why I thought. <laughs> <laughs> because they couldn't pass it, they couldn't catch it. <laughs>
<laughs> well, I feel a little bit hard done by with that draw there. More than a little hard done by, but never mind. There was an argument for not making the GFIs and just putting other tackles on on the ball. But um, I think fouling him, I mean, fouling him would have definitely. The, fouling him would have ended it, right? Because then he would have had to zombie. Uh, maybe not, he's still got a zombie pickup, hasn't he? So maybe just. Maybe no GFIs was better. Yep. Yep. Right, so there's a chance of getting... I mean, that, that was a pretty good half, considering I was on nine players for the entire drive. That was a, that was a pretty good half of Blood Bowl. There's obviously no way to get the one turn here. But what I could do is get a timeout. And maybe get a touchdown from a timeout. So I am going to put my players in the squares to make that a little bit better. Thanks, Keith. Hey, look, it's not easy. You tried doing this for an hour and a half, Keith. It's not easy. So there was no, uh, not only was there no, um, not only was there no timeout, one of my players got stunned. Get a power. Yeah, it'll be good when the cheerleaders are on this, won't it? Like when you get the, when you get the cheerleaders without having to pay for them, that'll be great. Injured, good. Two SPP. Well done, money. Let me get this blitz here. He should not stand firm. But I don't get an assist on the foul. That was one extra assist that I got by him not stand firming. I am, of course, going to turn 16 foul. There's literally no reason not to. I might run into this fella again, and if he'd had a dead flesh golem, that would be good for me. I'm, I'm honestly, Dimmy, I'm gutted that I'm going to have to play more than three games to get my weekly, <laughs> my weekly thing. There, there was no, there was no, um, there was no post-match screen there, was there? Very annoying, but uh, there you go, it was 1-1 one, one anyway, um, and, yep. <laughs> I'm in silver because I've have barely played Blood Bowl 3 and they've got this weird thing where you drop ranks every season. So I'll be in silver for the purposes of this run, but never mind. Um, yes, there you go. Got got a decent amount of SPP, uh, but no chills and skills yet. I could random the goo, but I think it's more important to get sneaky, get dirty player guaranteed as soon as possible. So, yep, no level ups there. And, uh, yeah, that team's just ready for the next match. So, uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.